All right, what's up, guys? Um, or guy, Skyler. Uh, but this is also a video for anyone who's interested in how to um, start working with Impulse on Ableton. So the first step is to create a track for Impulse to go on. So we're going to right click anywhere in this area here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, but you'll see where the dialog opened up. Insert MIDI track uh, because MIDI is the uh, computer information uh, that the uh, sequencer will use, that Impulse will use to trigger our drums, our drum hits. So uh, I went over to the search bar here, which you can show with this arrow on the upper left. Uh, it typed in Impulse, and then you'll notice that the um, icon for Impulse here is uh, darker gray, which means it's a plugin. And plugins always appear first um, whenever you search for something. So we're going to drag that onto the MIDI track. I'm going to get rid of this audio track uh, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, so now we've got this track, which will um, output all of the sound from Impulse. So the first thing that I do is just go through, um, I type in kick up here, and then I go through my samples, which I've gotten from various places, uh, some torrents, some websites like Music Radar, or Sample Swap. Um, and I've started to name uh, about 30 of them. It's really helpful, but it's also really time consuming. Um, you have to be very figurative in your speech. So anyway, I'm just going to go with uh, this one that I called Low Click. It's a 50 cent kick uh, from one of Dr. Dre's sample packs. So now that we have it down here on this first pad uh, of the eight that are right here. Every time we press the play button, that kick will hit. Uh, hopefully that's not too loud. Uh, I have the laptop sitting on the speaker. Uh, but my sound engineering self would tell me otherwise. So now i got to find a snare. Well, I like that one. And I always put that on the fourth. Um, I like to organize these so that they go from the lowest sound to the highest. And when you uh, insert MIDI clip here, and when you look at this, uh, they're set up uh, in the same order that they are on um, this screen here. So you would see the kick is all the way down here snare is right here, and then I would put my hats here, or here, or here, uh, but I, I do like to use several of each. I like to layer all of my drums. Uh, that really helps in filling out the sound. So, on that note, I'm going to find something else to layer with this first snare, and I'm just dragging these onto the pads here. Um, and we'll get into what's all down here in a second. But first, I'm going to find a hi-hat sound. This is from the Alchemist sample pack. Uh, the Alchemist was is a badass uh, producer. So you should check him out and check out the sample pack if you like his music or you know what you hear here. Here, here. Okay. I like that one. So I've got this kick, that snare, that snare, and that hi-hat. It's a pretty simple kit, or a pretty, yeah, simple kit, not kick. Um, actually what I'm going to do is delete this, and you can either press over, he over on the right side of the screen, where the vertical bars are, to get to this screen, or you can press tab. It does the same thing. Um, this is arrangement view where you can, um, or this might be session view. Yeah, this is session view. This is where you just audition clips together. Um, 
we'll look at that either later on or in a different video. But basically, this track right here corresponds with this impulse track that I set up right here. Just making sure this is still recording. Okay. So, uh, what I'm going to do, you'll see there are um, blocks right here. And these hold, oops, getting ahead of myself. These hold uh, clips, which are just usually loops that um, tell whatever plugin um, is on that track basically what to do. So if you double click on one of them, any of them, it'll bring you, it'll bring up a, just a new clip, a new default clip, and it gives you a different color scheme or a different color every time. You can see the color schema here uh, if you right click. Color coding is also very important when working with Ableton because uh, it's easier to see what you're trying to do with the colors uh, as far as whether you're um, making a part more intense or more sparse. Uh, I find it's easier to uh, illustrate that with colors as opposed to words, you know, saying you know, two times hi-hat or whatever. Na renaming it, you have to read it, whereas if you just look at it with the color, it is, uh, yeah dramatic experience. Excuse the pun. So, uh, now that I've been babbling, um, double click on this after we double click to make a new one. And by default, it's one bar in length um, and it's set to loop. Now, if you want this to play over and over, you will definitely want that on loop. Otherwise, it'll just play once and then it'll stop. Now, to get it to play, you press the play button that accompanies every new clip that you put in this view. So as I press this, you'll see it starts the, um, the uh, clicker or the, the bar it starts to go at the tempo. And the tempo can be seen up here. Now you can click this and then drag it up and down, or you can type in whatever you would uh, like to make the tempo. So, for instance, I really like 92. Uh, that was not really a trick of Dilla's, but when Dilla, uh, Jay Dilla, uh, was a producer from the 2000s, 90s and 2000s, that uh, everyone should check out. He uh, changed a lot about hip hop that inspires even EDM and uh, other types of music today. So anyway, he was, yeah, whatever, um, instrumental. So one of his lines is I usually rock at 92 BPM. So in honor of him, I like to start at 92 a lot of times. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So anyway, back to this. You can see kick, snare, and hat. Now it corresponds over here you can see Alchemist hi hat, 50 cent snare, 50 cent snare, 4 and 31, and 50 cent kick. So, this right here is the music, the information that the computer will read. So, first, what I'm going to do is uh, change this to a two bar loop. Um, just because if you have a one bar loop, a lot of times it gets really monotonous, so setting yourself up uh, for two bars is a, an easier way to uh, make sure you fill out space and make your tracks interesting. So when I right click here, um, we will have the option right here to change the grid. So I'm going to change it to quarter notes, so every time, or every Every break in the grid is at a quarter tone, which is what I will do for the kick down here. So I'm going to make one, or I'm going to make yeah one one kick per quarter note, also known as four on the floor. Um, I did that by double clicking, or 
Uh, you can also press the B key to change your mouse into a pencil, which does the same thing, but you can more rapidly add it in just by click instead of double click. So, now that I have these loaded in here, when I press play up here, you can hear every time that this ticker hits the beginning of a new kick note, it'll trigger the kick sound. So now what I'm going to do is add a snare at every, one, every other one. Uh, now up here, the headphone uh, icon right here, if you click on it, enable it, every time that you uh, enter a new note, it will play it for you. And also, if you drag the velocity up and down, it will play that for you as well. Down here denotes these holes uh, happen at every, every trigger, and they denote uh, how hard the uh, plugin will play the um, given note which can, well, which really helps in humanizing uh, drum tracks. So, true to my word, I'm going to uh, layer these snares. And you'll hear that's more, it's thicker when you put them together than if they were by themselves. Yet, uh, having both of them together doesn't often yield the sound that you would uh, anticipate. So having two really shitty samples um, layered a lot of times can be as awesome as having one awesome sample. So don't get rid of those samples you don't think you like because a lot of times they come in handy. So now what I'm going to do is put one my head in between every uh, kick and snare. Just true um, true to the electronic music style. So what I'm going to do, just to spice it up, is add uh, another note at the 16th grid right here, uh, and I'm going to make the first one softer and the second one a little louder. Uh, but neither quite as loud as the original. I'm going to bring that up a little bit. And it'll just add some flavor uh, to, the, to the thing. Uh, so I'm going to copy that, and I'm just going to put it over here. No, I'm not. Okay. Command C. Command V. Okay. Then I'm going to put this snares back in. Okay, so now we just have a real simple drum beat. Um, and, you know, I'm just going to add like a little tambourine just to give it a little more personality before we get into editing parameters. So I'm just going to put that at every, with every kick. And it's a little overbearing, so I'm just going to bring it down. I don't quite like it yet, but I like the personality of it, so uh, there's a lot of ways to um, edit it in Impulse so that you can make it into something you like. So, let's get started on that. And down here we have all of the uh, triggers that we're using up here. Um, to get to the MIDI editing screen, I double click on the clip. And to get to the Impulse screen, I double click on the top um, title um, section up here, 
but you can also get to it down here at the bottom right of the screen and go between the two. So, to begin with, we have the, um, well, first parameter here is called start, and this just offsets the start so that it won't start um, until, you know, in this case, 13 and a half milliseconds or 19.8 milliseconds up to 100 milliseconds into the sample. For the kick, sometimes this is a good thing. It can be good for kind of muffling the sound, making it not so um, overbearing. So you can do that. The next one is transpose, which true to its name will transpose it either up four octaves, down four octaves, or anywhere in between. Now with most of these um, knobs, if their default position is not at seven o'clock right here, uh, there's a orange arrow when you change the parameter right above it. If you click that, it'll return to the default, which um, can really help if you need to go back and listen to what the original sounded like. So, you know, I got that. Tune the kick down. Uh, that's usually what I do, but you can also uh, tune a kick up and layer it with uh, another kick that you have, which can add a uh, beater kind of style, uh, which would actually sound uh, closer to a real drum set. So, yeah. Anyway, I'll just make this minus seven. This is measured in semitones or half steps. So if you have one that corresponds to uh, moving up a half step, up a whole step is two, you know, a minor third. If these were melodic samples, would be three and so on. Um, but since we're not dealing with melodic samples, uh, the semitone feature is less relevant. Um, and we've also got a stretch feature, which um, can be uh, can have interesting results. It will stretch out your sample um, either minus 100 or plus 100. And I think there might be some other stipulation, that you, some other parameter that you have to have set. I don't often use it because um, it's more of a special effect, I think in my opinion. Down here we've got the soft button which um, basically does the same thing well it kind of does the same thing as start. With start the start knob it offsets uh, your sample and then starts it at full volume. With soft it brings the sound in um, over a period of milliseconds. So you can hear with this, it's real muffled because it cuts off the transient or the attack of the kick. Whereas with that, you can hear, you know, it's just a lot more muffled, which can be good, um, you know, for if you just want the tail of a sample, you know, that's definitely a helpful thing. I'm going to turn it on because I don't know how loud the beater noises with uh, the laptop sitting on the speaker. So um, for the next section I'm going to move on to the uh, snare for, for this next part right here. Uh, so this section is called the drive and if you turn the saturator button on, it enables this section. Now, your only choice for this, uh, your only choice of parameters for this section is the gain. So, you know, you set it to taste. You can hear oops, by itself it gets a little more gritty as you turn the gain knob up. Um, and that also brings me to another point, uh, kind of. This um, 
the, next to the play button are the solo button, which turns blue, and to the left is the mute button, which turns orange. And you can see it also enables it down here. Um, so you can set it at either, either spot. And it just mutes that pad. So I'm going to turn that drive all the way. Well, I'll leave it in just a little bit. And the next section is the filter section. So to enable this, uh, you'll press the filter button. And you've got your choice of uh, filters, which just take out certain frequencies. Uh, by default, it's set to LP1, which is low pass. So uh, sometimes this can sound a little backwards, but with low pass, or um, yeah, anyway, low pass just means that it takes the highs out uh, to a certain extent. High pass means it takes the lows out, the low frequencies. So if something is sounding too boxy, you would put a high pass filter on it and take out uh, frequencies which correspond to this knob right here. So since this is a snare, you typically want the highs more than the lows, although a uh, good bass in your snare can also be a asset. So, since I set it for high pass, uh, as I bring this up, you'll hear that some of the lower, uh, thicker frequencies are being cut out. You can take that all the way up to 18 and a half uh, kilohertz, which is kind of overkill, because uh, that's just about as high as you can hear. Um, but anyway, uh, this knob next to it is the resonance, and this corresponds to the uh, the gain of the frequency at the cutoff point. So what that means is, as I turn this up, it's going to cut off everything above 320, or I'm sorry, cut off everything below 329 hertz. Uh, but if I turn the resonance up, it'll boost that 329 hertz before it cuts it. Uh, so it'll give it a big lump in the um, in the frequency. And if I drop this in here, you can see that well, if I had a million dollars, now if I had uh, this snare on its own track, then I would be able to uh, uh, just see that that frequency spectrum using the EQ plugin, but that's irrelevant, no worries. So anyway, it, it, it gives it a more ringing sound. Uh, so this is without any resonance at the cutoff point, 329, and this is with uh, 3, about 3, and then this is at 10. Uh, and as you go up, it changes the pitch because you're, you've got that hump at, the, um, at your cutoff point, which corresponds to the frequency that you hear. So that can be good for certain effects. Uh, I tend to not use the resonance too much uh, unless I want you know, a lot of bass in my kick or a lot of um, a lot of the mid frequencies like four or five hundred that would correspond to the um, the beater sound of the kick. So next we have the decay function, uh, which will just cut off how much of the sample is heard. So you can go from ten seconds. Um, if you theoretically had a 10 second sample, uh, it wouldn't cut off for 10 seconds. But uh, you can go all the way down to 5 milliseconds, which wouldn't make much sense because you can't hear anything that short. So uh, I like to do this a lot of times with my snares if they're taking up too much space, or my kicks if there's too much of a tail. You can bring the decay down and it'll just cut off the, the end of it and leave you with more more space in your in your uh, 
drum sound. And I'm going to pitch that up. Uh, I know this is sounding pretty dumb, but it is just a sample. So, excuse me on that one. If you have a stereo setup, such as headphones or two speakers, which correspond to the left and the right on your computer, you can pan the sample uh, all the way to the left is this, and all the way to the right is this. So 50 and 50. I'm going to set that. Now for each sample, you have uh, a volume knob right here, which is usually the first thing you want to reach for, uh, just because getting the, the volume right on that is more important than uh, messing with the sound's personality, so to speak. Down here you can transpose the entire kit, uh, again up four octaves or down four octaves, which is pretty extreme, but you know, whatever, usually you would just do up four or five or, you know, but that's just my style. Um, and then, yeah, that is all I'm going to talk about as far as uh, impulse goes. Uh, none of these other uh, knobs or boxes do I uh, ever use hardly just because I haven't gone into any tutorials and figured out exactly how to use them uh, well. Um, one last thing I will say is if you have a um, hi-hat that rings out that you want to choke, uh, i.e. cutting it off when another sound plays, you can hit on the eighth pad, go down to link, and when you click on that right here, whenever one of these plays, it will cut off the other one if it's playing at the same time. So that's really useful uh, in making realistic sounding, or more realistic sounding, drum sounds. Um, yeah, one more thing. Uh, the band pass was the other, I hadn't mentioned that. Low pass lets uh, lows in, high pass lets highs in, cuts the lows, and band pass lets uh, a certain frequency in the middle, or rather a certain group of frequencies in the middle, so it cuts both the lows and the highs, which is uh, good in making, so uh, making sounds sound uh, Oldish, I guess, because when you have when you listen to something on a vinyl, for instance, the there aren't a lot of highs and there aren't a lot of lows um, in a traditional setup, just because of the um, certain limitations of vinyl. So anyway, uh, bandpass is what these two BP and BP two are. Uh, notch lets a certain frequency in. Uh, this lets a group of frequencies, bandpass does, and notch is, uh, lets just one frequency that you set. Um, and then also, low pass 2, for instance, would be more of a steep cutoff than low pass 1. So, uh, adjust accordingly. Sometimes it can be too drastic, and sometimes it it's not uh, just not enough. So in that case, just change that. Uh, one last thing I wanted to say, up here is the keyboard button. Now when you have this enabled, conveniently it maps home row A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K, yeah, A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K to each of these pads, uh, which getting even deeper, correspond to uh, middle C. So if you had a keyboard, a MIDI keyboard plugged in, uh, that would be the same as pressing the home keys with this enabled up here. Okay, so for this you can actually press, you know, A, F, G, um, J, K, and kind of make a you know, just a kind of whatever uh, beat, and then you 
can go through and, you know, for instance, if I record, um, uh, you record on there by pressing the record enable button. Uh, you have what you just played right here. And if you find a bar that you like, you can just bring it down like this. You know, I, I like this one right here. And then, right click on it, crop clips, clip, and then you've got, you know, another clip right here. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, if, in the case that there is a stop button right over here instead of a record, um, you'll have to go to the small M over on this side of the screen right here where this is lighting up and press this bottom button which is the mixer tab uh, so you'll have to record enable uh, to record on a track and when you're not planning to record on the track you want to switch that off so that you don't accidentally start adding in clips that are blank and that really throws me off um, Luckily, if you already have one thing record enabled on Ableton, if you press another one, it will uh, null the first. So that also helps. Uh, and you can override that by pressing the um, Windows key. I have a Windows keyboard, um, so I think Command is what that is. So anyway, um, yeah, there you go. Hopefully that helps. Uh, with doing some things on impulse. Let me know if you guys have any questions.